Okay, we have a lot of people joining. That's excellent. That's great. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the most important conversation of the week, of the month, of the quarter, of the year. Right? <laughs> we have a very, very, very interesting topic. And that's a topic I've been asking myself ages. And finally, we're going to have the chance to discuss it. We are grateful for you to be part of it. Yeah, and then uh, we brought to you a very interesting panel, and you're also going to be part of it. And I tell you when. So uh, welcome once again. And if I may say one thing, so people that have joined already, uh, please make sure that you are using the hashtag Randevu Africa, and uh, to promote this event. And um, if you know anybody who wanted to attend but has forgotten about that, ask them to come around right now because the conversation happened today and right now so make sure that you use the hashtag so my colleague will be dropping that in the uh in the chat and you can pick it up from there and share that and i uh, would also would like to say that feel free to introduce yourself so tell us where you're coming from so who you are and then uh what do you want to uh, what do you want to get out of this conversation today so that would be very much appreciate it if that's uh, if that's possible i can see more and more people joining we're already 30 people but we need more right so if one of us if each of us can bring one more person <laughs> we can double that in the next couple of minutes so yeah that'll be appreciated i can see many faces so you can uh, you, you all mute it but i can see some uh, some faces i can see eduardo for example so welcome eduardo eduardo garcia so i can see robo robo ibu so welcome to you who else can i see karel nyman but that's more picture so, good well, afternoon good afternoon good afternoon sir so, hey carl nice to see you hi laura nice seeing you yeah hey, hey. Yeah, it's a reunion, a Rendezvous Africa reunion. Exactly. Okay, now that's what I look like now. <laughs> I, I look like the picture. <laughs> Carol, you look like you come from a spaceship. <laughs> no, that, that, that's the plug to my electric car when it's charging. Oh, okay. Excellent, excellent. Welcome, welcome and thank you for joining us today. We appreciate okay, it. Okay, I'm going to remove my picture because we have load tedding and things here, so it's easier uh, if, uh, on the bandwidth if I stop the video. Okay, we should be starting in about uh, a minute or so. I think on the back channel, I'm going to ask my team to check that we are all okay. So we have everybody ready. Don't forget the, the hashtag, please. Oh, that's the music from North Africa, isn't it? Sound. Excellent, Captain. Have you been a DJ before? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to after this. <laughs> but you have some skills there. <laughs> so that's nice. That's nice. Thank you, thank you. That's nice. Oh, by the way, for the next rendezvous that we will have, but just let us know so people in the audience what kind of music you would like us to play right so we can always use that so, uh, that, that, uh, that that be good so let me then ask the team i think we should be about ready correct i'm fine so uh, yes are we all set vincent if you can just respond to me uh in our conversations that's fine i'm just uh waiting for one of our colleagues but why i'm doing that so let me once again say welcome to the uh, uh to the conversation that we're going to have today very interesting very important conversation i can promise you you will not regret it at all definitely not and we have a range of speakers that are there to speak with you but it's all about us contributing right because it's so important that i would i would not want one of you to say that okay i had the chance to discuss about to talk about uh, this very important topic, but I didn't contribute. Well, that'd be a bit of a shame on you, right? But I'm hoping that we're not going to get to uh, uh, to this stage. So we have people coming from DRC, from Kenya, you know, from uh, from Cote d'Ivoire, from Nigeria, and many other countries represented, obviously, right? And then, uh, and like I say, we're going to have a very, very interesting perspective that's going to come from uh, different people. And feel free, as we are discussing, to pop your questions in the comment box. 
And uh, we do our best to highlight some of them and ask to our speakers and discuss it over again, right? And as you know, probably the, uh, the, uh, the way this conversation goes, we have a first part where we have the panel discussions and after that kind of a QA and a session where we have an open seat, we invite you to come and just ask your question. And after that, we can move on to the uh, uh, non-formal part of the, uh, uh, of the question. So let me just ask uh, to, uh, okay, I don't have, I don't know, maybe uh, Laura, you wanna say hello before we, uh, we start the I think I, I run this event with Laura, so I wanna make sure that she says a couple of words. Hello, greetings everyone. Lovely to see so, so many faces. Um, for those of you, shall I just, I'm just going to give you a little bit of uh, background because some of you may be new to this whole rendezvous series. As you can hear from the way we started with the music and, and really talking to people in the community, this is a very dynamic, um, dynamic setting. Um, it, it, this is really about having conversations. It's really about asking questions. It's about establishing networks and, and, and networking with one another. And what our, our big aim is as REN21 is we are not here to prescribe or to have a particular outcome. What we want to bring to this discussion about what do renewables mean for Africa are some of the big questions that are being asked, bringing in people who are working on this, people who are raising the questions. Um, you know, for, for us from REN21, you know, we're the Renewable Energy Policy Network for the 21st century, very long name, hence why we just say REN21. But our focus is how do we really support the rapid uptake of renewables? But it's not just about renewables, it's really about how how can renewables support economic development, innovation, and what role can renewables play in, in Africa? And so the focus of this, this event is really about a rendezvous. It really is about coming together and having a conversation, asking differentiated questions. Continent is a huge, uh, diverse place, multiple countries, 54 countries. Uh, I hope I've got that number right. Um, and, and the questions we need to be asking, you know, very, very much uh, based on, on the socioeconomic uh, conditions, requirements, governance structures, geographies, um, and when it comes to renewables, both the resources that countries have, both natural resources and those that they need to that they need to um, to import in order to be able to have the the energy services. Uh, to really drive that, that, that economic development and, and innovation. Um, and so that's, that's really the structure of our, of our conversation today. And hopefully you will feel comfortable um, in putting questions in the chat channel, discussing amongst yourselves, um, and feel free to disagree. We're not afraid of asking tough questions. We're not afraid of disagreement. Um, what we really need to do is to really find those points that we have in common and use those as a way of building, uh, building forward, uh, building solutions. Um, so I'm going to quickly look to you, Tony. Um, should I do a little bit of framing um, about today? Do we have Henrietta? I think Henrietta probably, I think she's uh, just getting ready, but uh, why she's getting ready, I would just take the chance to let our speaker just introduce himself very quickly. So just 30 seconds each. And by this time, uh, I, be I believe we'll have Dr. Henrietta and we can then frame it and then go ahead. So if we start with uh, Olola, please. Oh, she's already here, by the way. So. Uh, first one, one first one to turn their camera <laughs> on. So yeah, Olola, just you know, a little 30 second snippet of, of, of who you are and your interest in this today. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, joining this discussion with REN21. Um, so my name is Olola Vieira. I've been, um, I would say, energy, energy efficiency uh, uh, aficionados for the last uh, 10 years. Um, I'm currently supporting uh, the program development in Côte d'Ivoire for the Global Green uh, Growth Institute uh, based in, in Korea. And, uh, and so for me, uh, I have a strong interest on energy and uh, renewable energy because for me, it's the basis for any development and it's a key topic for, for Africa. And, and definitely we need all our brains to come together to find solution to, to steer up this, uh, this um, potential that we have. So yeah, that's, that's me. Pleasure to join you. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you very much. So if I have uh, Patrick, please. Uh, yes, hello. Um, thank you. 
Thank you, Tony. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Ren, to anyone for inviting me in this conversation. Uh, my name is Patrick Kasha, um, and I'm a, I'm a chemical engineer uh, with um, nine years of, um, I'll say, um, management um, occupation in, uh, in Eidelberg Summit Group mainly in uh, Belgium and in, in Congo, uh, where I have been uh, running um, as a production manager, technical director, and uh, procurement director, uh, the CILU, uh, Cimenterie de Lucala. And uh, my interest in uh, energy started since, uh, I think, I would say since two, 2004, when I read for the first time uh, the plan B that changed my life regarding the fossil fuel. And yeah, this is uh, an important uh, topic for me. And uh, I think this needs to be part of uh, the conversation. Mainly is people to understand why and uh, how <clears throat> to get there quite rapidly. And uh, I appreciated the initiative of, of uh, REN21 in that respect. And uh, I hope I can bring something in and uh, that we can progress um, quite rapidly on the topic. Excellent, thank you very much. And after that, I'm gonna move swiftly to Gibril. And after Gibril, so Laura, please, we can introduce our keynote speaker and that would be uh, great, Gibril. So thank you very much, Tony, and uh, thanks for the invite to, to be on the panel at Rendezvous. Um, my name is Ajibril Mohammed. I am the CEO at Ofgen. Um, Ofgen is a, a CNI uh, operator in the solar space. Basically, we um, build solar power plants and sell electricity to um, commercial industrial clients in the sub-Saharan um, uh, uh, area. Um, we are part of a group called CFAO, um, and uh, I'm based out of Nairobi. And uh, the last couple of days, the, the, the weather hasn't been so good, but today is very good to discuss about renewable because the sun is out. <laughs> Thank you very much. Excellent. You know, if the sun is not out, you, you, you at least have the wind, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, right well, go, yeah. uh, go ahead and introduce... Um, our lightning speaker and then uh, frame the topic as well, please. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Alola, Patrick and Jabril and, and welcome Henrietta. Nice Hi. to yeah. nice to see you. Um, mm -hmm. Just before I turn the floor over to you, just, just for our, our, um, our, our audience today, the topic today is about taking charge, right? And the title is Mobilizing African Money to Accelerate Renewable Energy Uptake on the Continent. And that's really the focus of what we want to talk about today is how do we mobilize? How can we mobilize? How can we think creatively about mobilizing African money for African um, acceleration of access to, to renewable energy. Um, I just a few minor little facts just to kind of set the framing before I turn the floor over to Henrietta. I mean, only 2% of the 3 trillion US dollars that are currently being invested in renewables is happening in Africa. Um, we know that there's been the promise of 100 billion a year um, from the climate talks. Where is that money? We're not seeing much of it. Um, and I think. I think, I think a, a growing a sentiment is can't wait, can't be taken hostage by the international community. We have the unfortunate invasion of Ukraine by Russia, which is affecting global markets, which has ripple effects, and that the continent, while posed, poised for this economic development and innovation is very much held hostage by its lack of access to stable, affordable, reliable um, um, energy. And so that's really the framing of this conversation is how can we mobilize African mm -hmm. money to accelerate renewable energy uptake on the continent? So I'm going to pass the floor to Henrietta to give us just a little bit of a, a lightning talk. And then we'll go back to our panelists um, that, that you heard speak um, just a moment ago to really have this, this, this discussion about how can we think how to mobilize um, financing on the continent? So Henrietta, the floor is yours. Thank you, Laura, and thank you, Tony, for inviting me. And um, just a quick one before I go into what I have prepared for today. 
Um, just, just thinking about what the overview you gave about um, just 2% of the amount of money um, dedicated to uh, renewable energy being spent in Africa. And again, it's, it, it speaks to most of what I'm going to say here because money chases value, okay? So, and it's sad that we have the sun. Why are we not the kings, the global leaders when it comes to renewable energy, okay? So that's just one question to think about because really when you have something of value, you don't convince people about putting money behind it, okay? When Mo Ibrahim started the mobile telephone in Africa, people, didn't, people, people abroad didn't believe it would work out, but it did, okay? And eventually when it did, nobody had to convince people to pay for the mobile phones. People needed to communicate and so they paid for those phones. So the question is, again, you know, what are we putting out there that shows that this is something that is going to, how are we trying to make money from making a difference, okay? How are we showing that what we have to offer is of value so that people are attracted, not compelled to or convinced or being asked to put their money behind it, okay? And um, I'm going to go straight to my um, presentation right now, if it just disappeared from my screen, I guess when you shared screen. Well, basically what I'm gonna be talking about is how Africa can earn respect because respect is earned, okay? And I was gonna, I'm was i gonna start by talking about a personal experience I had some 20 years ago when I was um, a new faculty member at Lagos Business School. And people were sometimes surprised to see me standing in, in front of the class as the lecturer, because I looked really young. And so one day I actually heard a, a guy say, um, I hope we will learn today. And I wasn't bothered. I didn't get annoyed. I just, because I had prepared and I was confident of, what, of my delivery. And by the end of the session, the same person came up and said, thank you for the session, ma'am. Another person came and said, oh, I didn't know you could teach so well. I was thinking, even if you didn't think that, um, is, you, is that supposed to be a compliment, okay? But anyway, so, and somehow I didn't expect these blatant shows of change of mind, okay? Um, but again, I share this experience to draw an analogy between, um, for, between what have my experience and the purpose of my discourse today. Because if Africans want to attract funding or the respect of the rest of the world, okay? We need to give people a reason for that. Well, today, Global attention is poised towards Africa because Africa provides 8% of the resources, the natural resources that the world, the rest of the world need. And, but besides that, okay, why should the world respect Africa? What are we known for? What, what are we known to be good at, okay? Apart from music and sports, okay? So I'm not saying we don't have things to be known for that, we're not, that, we, have, that we have done, but the question is, where are we the best, okay? So yes, colonization happened, and yes, neo-colonization continues to undermine Africa because the international trade terms remain unfair to Africa, which is why we have um, a movement called Fair Trade today. And there, of course, there are other subtle and not so subtle exploitative activities in the international um, sphere. But we can't continue to blame others or the past for the state of affairs because I believe that we have come of age to challenge these issues. Okay? And we need to begin to hold our leaders accountable. The other day, I saw a video where the citizens of Sri Lanka, a country that's now bankrupt, actually invaded the palace of their president and he had to run out and they chased after him. And when they found him, they said that they, they, I mean, there was a mob action. They were actually hitting him. Now that's a bit extreme, but the point is we don't need to wait till things get that bad. We need to begin to hold our leaders accountable. Okay. Um, there's some change beginning to happen as um, some African countries, mainly Ghana and the Ivory Coast have started saying, um, started compelling that, compelling the, um, their, their, their people not to export raw materials, but to process and value before they export just so that they rake in more revenue, okay? So something similar happens in the export scene where if there's a hundred billion to be gained from a particular product, Africa may, be, may get maybe 5 billion because 
Africa exports the primary product and then others add value package and then get you know more than 95 percent of the of the um, revenue streams on the value chain. So Africa gets more if Africa processes and it's not so difficult to process. Okay, we just have to put our minds to it. So as the saying goes, we're either part of the problem or part of the solution. So we must decide where we, where, we, where we want to stand, not sit on the fence and complain that people, there's racism and all of that, okay? Um, <clears throat> so if we, to, to, to not be part of the problem, we have to be part of those who stop people from engaging in fraudulent activities or at least not be part of those people, okay? Um, because what happens when you're not an economic leader is that any offense committed is, is, is exaggerated, even though it's a global problem. I mean, I recall that um, when I was in the, as soon as I, when I was working in the US, as soon as I got my line, uh, my mobile line, I got crank calls from, for the first, in fact, I think it continued till I left three months afterwards, okay? People saying all kinds of things, um, you owe us money for this or come and pay for this or we can do this for your car. Meanwhile, I didn't have a car of my own while I was there for, for just three months. So the, the point is, these things happen everywhere, but when you lack economic leadership, your situation tends to be exaggerated, okay? And, but the good news is that there are other Af young Africans doing the continent proud. So recently, um, I forget his name now, but there was, a, there was an African from Ivory Coast who has built an inexpensive laptop that performs better than a MacBook, has more features than a MacBook, and also um, has invented sunglasses that you just touch to pick, to pick a call and allow, it allows you to um, keep your eyes on the road while you um, pick and uh, answer your calls. So um, there was also another case of a Nigerian young man who built drones from scrap. He was quickly, of course, um, as happens in most African countries, this will go unnoticed, but he was quickly snapped up by um, a, an investor from Finland and he's there right now doing wonders. The same thing happened to the young guy who invented a windmill to provide electricity um, for his community, okay? So, um, and then more recently, there was a young Ghanaian guy, just 17 years old, who invented a solar powered scooter for disabled persons. And um, it was actually, I mean, it's, it's a, it was a video on LinkedIn, it actually works. And he says, um, yeah, he has, currently has one gear and the next one he does is gonna have three gears so that you can increase or reduce um, your speed. Now, the day this I saw this, the day before I saw this, um, a Tesla had um, stopped on one of our bridges in Lagos. And I was saying to myself, um, Lagos is in Nigeria, for those who don't know, um, if Elon Musk had seen this invention by this young 17 year old, he would have made this Tesla both electric and solar powered. So I guess the guy forgot to charge his Tesla before he took it out, so he got stuck on the bridge. But if there was a solar power alternative, that car would have continued to move, okay? So there are great things that can come out of Africa. And um, there are quite a, more, than a, more than a few um, renewable energy solutions on the continent as we speak. So I, but for some reason, we keep looking out for imported solutions rather than invest in our homegrown um, solutions, which could eventually um, evolve to the point where they have a global appeal. Okay, remember, this is where the sun is most of the time. Okay, when you live abroad, you begin to realize that having the sun as much as we do is a luxury. And we need to, you know, harness the potential of that gift. So we need to rise to the challenge, to take charge of our future, each one in his or her own little or not so little way, okay? So we've got to help, it's either we, there's a lot of talk about STEM right now, okay? But at the same time, there are a lot of inventions and innovations going on. So there was another case of a guy who didn't even go to um, university who invented a water power generator that actually works because a friend of his died from inhaling the fumes from um, a diesel power generator. Okay, there's another case of a lady in Ghana who makes bicycles using bamboo, that just blew my mind because I never imagined a bicycle with anything other than metal, a metal frame. But um, in fact, she's now exporting the bamboo, the bamboo bicycles because um, some countries found it 
um, more, um, climate friendly and thought it was um, uh, something good to introduce to their countries. I think it was the Netherlands or so. So she's now exporting out of Ghana. And the great news, the great thing about her is for every bamboo she cuts down, she plants five. So talk about renewable energy and see how, and of course, you know that it can be recycled unlike metal. That's almost impossible to get rid of, okay? So of course, metal can be recycled as well, but bamboo is even better, especially when you replace as you use. So um, there's so many, I mean, these are just a few examples of recent innovations and there have been several in the past. I don't know if you know it, but Africans pioneered the, the idea of vaccines or actually it was West African slaves in America that so uh, that um, showed them how they could um, use the principle of vaccination to cure illness and also help their mothers deliver through cesarean sections. Um, historically also, African Americans, who are Africans originally, invented the air conditioning unit, things like the air conditioning units, refrigerating systems, um, fire extinguishers, the telephone system, and so many others that can be verified. And you, you, you don't need to go into any archive, just go on Google and just um, type in Black Afri um, African American innovations. And you see a list of over 2000 innovations that um, came from Africa. So this shouldn't be too surprising because Africa is where civilization started. And evidence of this can still be found in Liverpool Museum in the UK. I actually, a friend of mine told me and I actually went there myself to see for myself. And indeed it is there, right from the very first tools to even the houses. I mean, that we built such beautiful houses that they were carried as is across to the UK. And so you go to Liverpool Museum in the UK and you see homes that were built centuries back in Africa there with all kinds of um, indigenous um, decorations on the facade. Um, we built beds and doors without nails or glue, which I find really intricate, okay? Um, our artworks are only being recently relu reluctantly returned, I think after the speech Chimamanda gave um, at the halls in Germany. You know, so the point is, there are lots of amazing things, okay? The Egyptian pyramids are one of the seven, seven wonders of the world because of the height and symmetry that um, people still cannot figure out how they were achieved in those days when they, we didn't have the kind of technology we have today. So there, there, there's, there's, you know, there's just so much that Africa has been able to do in the past that we begin to ask ourselves, why is it that we now seem to be at the tail end? And I think the onus is now on us to see how we can begin to um, <clears throat> bring back this past glory, okay? See how we can convince Africans to believe in themselves, okay, and provide the kind of value that attracts investment. Quite a number of quite a number of inventions are being invested in as we speak. We know that um, um, we have quite a number. There are about seven unicorns now in Africa, tech unicorns. Um, we need to, but again, I think that the, the renewable energy space actually holds, you know, more. Uh, more potential for us in Africa because um, we've now found that there's, you can go from waste to wealth. Okay, there's plenty of wealth that can come from waste. There are quite a number of companies operating in that space. And I think that perhaps what they need to do is to be more visible on a digital platform to allow people to see what they're doing and decide to pitch in with them to um, evolve their solutions. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> So, this, so in, in other words, the, the question that we should be asking and the situation we're called to change is why Africa appears to be behind the rest of the world. Okay. So again, as Africans, we must realize that we are the ones to transform Africa. And so even though um, there seems to be a brain drain, we let's begin to ask ourselves, okay, so I go abroad, I learn more things, I have my African heritage and skills, how can I put those together? to make a difference in Africa, okay? Because it is Africans who will develop Africa. And I think that besides holding African leaders accountable, we also need to begin to challenge world leaders to adopt 
win a win-win system in the international um, trade, in the in the international trade as well as in economic policies, because <clears throat> research has, has also shown that contrary to the win-lose system that predatory capitalism proposes, everyone is much better off if all countries do well economically. Okay, so imagine if the Africans were not taking from Africa to America. Many of the inventions known there today, from the lawnmower to the traffic lights, the refrigerating system, to even, I mean, many times you hear that Thomas Edison invented the ball. Well, guess what? It was Louis Latimer, a black guy, who invented the carbon filaments that allow the ball, you know, light up for a long time. Without that filament, the ball would have been of no use. What's the point having a ball that only has provides light for just one minute? Okay. So, so then, so. So can I just jump in there, Henrietta, because I think you've got some really, you know, you're talking about all this innovation. And I think this, the sense is, is that there is a lot of innovation. There's a lot of momentum and, and energy on, on the continent. But how do we ramp it up? I know that you work on impact investment. Um, so how can we, you know, how can this be applied to ensuring that people and businesses get the energy services that they need, that we move beyond sort of the, the basic energy access to, you know, full, full, full energy access. Um, you know, there's lots of, there's lots of demands on, on other needs on the continent for food, uh, health, poverty alleviation. How do we, how do we take, how do we tap into this innovation? How do we support this innovation financially? to really move it to the, to the next level? So I think again, it's from visibility. So I'm speaking about, I'm sure many of the innovations I've just spoken about are new to some of the listeners. And so you don't, if you don't know something exists, if you don't, you don't, you don't pay for it or you don't ask for it, okay? So mm -hmm. I think that many of these innovations lack sufficient dis information dissemination. Because if, for instance, I knew that there was an alternative to diesel generators, why would I still use a diesel generator, which is very expensive to use? The diesel is expensive, generator is expensive, okay? If I knew that there was a, an alternative solution to cancer or, you know, in the healthcare space, or if I knew that coconut husks could give me power, okay, why would I go for more expensive alternatives? So I think that we, these innovations need more exposure because the, the drone guy I spoke about, for instance, got um, investors from, from, from Europe because he was on LinkedIn. Otherwise, he would have mm. just left. There are young boys who have been making cars in rural areas using scrap, scrap, but making cars at work for a long time, but because they're not exposed enough. Okay, um, recently some, some young boys, I think they call them um, Badagri boys or something, got a huge investment from some famous filmmaker in the US because he saw how they were using their meager resources to mimic real films, okay? And then send them all the equipment they would need to produce a real movie. So again, mm -hmm. you invest in the potential that you identify. So it's about so, identifying. So then how, so, so Jabril, are you, um, can, I have a question for you because being, you know, being the entrepreneur that you are, I mean, how do we, how do we, how do we tap into this innovation as Henrietta said and, and, and make the renewable energy space um, in Africa more?